In this week's video, I'm going to be looking at what equipment you need for restaurant photography. In the not too distant future, I have set up a shoot with a local pop-up restaurant. We're just waiting for a few stars to align. And I'm going to film the entire process, the whole thing to show exactly what goes on. They've been kind enough to let me do this. And I thought it'd be a good educational sort of way for everyone to see you know, what a good shoot looks like, hopefully. But before we get into that, I want to talk about the equipment. And the way that I'm gonna tackle this today is that I'm gonna start off with the bare minimum. I'm just gonna keep adding and adding and adding until we sort of get to a very comprehensive kit. Now there's no right and wrong in food photography. And we're gonna make a lot of assumptions. We're also going to talk only about Canon kit for one simple reason, it's what I own. I don't think it's better than anything else. I don't think it's worse than anything else. There's pros and cons to most systems. Canon's good for me. They have a good high resolution system. They have good tilt shift lenses and technical lenses and it's the only camera system I've ever used, so I don't like change. Now, when it comes to models and things like that, I'm gonna sort of give a bit more information about each one and what I would look for, but obviously budgets are all, you know, they're all different. So just because I have something doesn't mean you need it. I don't actually shoot restaurants anymore. It's been a long time since I've worked for a restaurant. The stuff that I do is a very different ball game. It's a very different requirement of kits. So, you know, let's, let's have a look. So when I started food, I started shooting restaurants. It was actually part of my rental agreement. I rented a studio above a bar, which was owned by the bar. And as part of my rental agreement, I had to shoot their menu for them once a month. I'd never shot food before that. And back then I was using one of these. This is a Canon 5D Mark II. Now I use a Canon 5D SR or Phase, but this is what I used for the start of my career. They're brilliant, they're dirt cheap now. This is camera number one as well. This is my original one that I bought. I got this way back in 2010, perhaps. Let me know if they weren't even made then, but it's pretty old, it's seen, it's seen a good life. Now, the first thing you're obviously gonna need is a camera body and a lens. And if you're just starting out, I would say get one of these and a 50 millimeter prime. Doesn't matter which one, but get a 50 millimeter prime. It's the most versatile lens for a beginner. So if you're just starting out, this will be the sort of setup you're gonna be looking for. I've got a 50 millimeter lens and a full frame camera. I would always choose an old generation full frame camera over a brand new crop sensor. I won't go into why in this video, but I'll do it in a future one, but just, just trust me, your images will look better. Now, assuming you're looking to do this for a profession, the thing you're going to want to do next is to buy another lens and it will be the 100 millimeter, but don't. The next thing you should buy is an identical second body if you want to do it for a career. If it's a hobby and it's a bit of fun, buy the lens because it's more exciting. But if you're serious about the profession, buy a second identical body. I have multiple 5 DSR cameras. If one breaks, if one's in the repair shop, I've still got enough cameras in the studio to pull off a production with spare kit. It's very important. So at this point here, we've got our two matching full frame cameras and our 50 millimeter lens. Now I'd go and buy a good laptop. And the reason I haven't done it yet is because I think a backup camera is more important than a laptop on location, but you want to be tethering. It's just a, a simple thing. You, you want to tether, you need to tether. Tethering is the way forward. Buy that laptop, get a good tether cable. I use tether tool stuff. I just like the orange cables, they look cool. Um, I'm sure you can buy as good ones from elsewhere, but I like the orange tether tool cables. So get your tether tools, get your jerk stopper, because if you break these USB ports on a Canon, it's 400 to $500 to get it repaired it's infuriating. So get the good jerk stopper, not just the little dangly bit, get the base plate one. I bought a cheap knockoff one thinking, how bad can it be? They're pretty bad, buy the tether tools one. I'm not endorsed by them, I don't get a kickback. They just make really good quality products. So at this stage, we've got two camera bodies, we've got our one lens, and we're sort of, you know, you've got enough there to get going with your laptop and everything, you can do some good productions. At this point, I'd probably go for a tripod. Now I haven't bought the tripod yet because the laptop and the camera is more important, but when you buy a tripod, don't buy a brand new one, buy a second hand one, buy a big beast of a tripod. This one here that I'm shooting on that I'm gonna find a way to show you in a minute is a, I'm reading off the side bit down here, a Manfrotto Art 058 professional tripod, made in Italy nonetheless. It's a beast. If you walk into it, you'll definitely get a bruise. It's not as big as my salon stand, but it's, it's big enough for location work. Don't buy a nasty cheap one, don't buy a lightweight one. This cost about 300 pounds secondhand. I don't know how much they are brand new, but they're, they're really good tripods. And because they're so well made, buying it used 10 years old, it's still gonna work for another 10, 20 years. We're still looking to get this 100 millimeter lens to our second lens, but before we get that, we need to get some lighting. And the first thing I'd buy for this sort of location work would be speed lights. I'm a big fan of cheap Chinese triggers. So I'd get the Godox triggers, but I wouldn't buy the Godox speed lights. They're not as good. And you, as you move on for your career, you'll realize why. 
What I would buy is some secondhand Canon or Nikon branded speed lights. I use the 580 EX2s, I've got about six of them, and I power them through the Godox battery packs with the Godox triggers, but I use the Canon flash. The color and the consistency of these lights is so much better than the Godox, and the lighting is more important than your lenses and cameras. Obviously you need a lens and a camera, but the light is very important. Modifier-wise, buy a good quality softbox from Elinchrom or Bowens or someone like that. Don't buy a cheap softbox. You want it to be your first modifier, a rectangular shaped softbox. You can get a nice adapter. I'll link all this kit in the description below with some Amazon links. Um, they'll probably be UK. If I'm feeling particularly adventurous, I'll do UK and US, we'll see. Um, but at least you'll be in the ballpark of what you need. But the quality of the softbox is vital. Don't skimp on the softbox. Skimp on the 50 millimeter lens, get the nifty 50 1.8 instead of the 1.2, but don't skimp on the softbox. It will have such a huge impact on the way that your work looks. Light stand wise, go for a, you know, you don't need an expensive light stand to hold a speed light, just go for something which looks okay. Probably a Manfrotto again, they're a good budget brand actually. They're not super cheap, but they're good enough quality. It's not like buying something from Cambo or Matthews, but pretty decent brand. So now is the point where we get to buy our new lens. And our new lens will be a 100 millimeter, probably a macro one. Um, for years, I used the Canon gold ring one. So Canon have like a gold ring level, a red ring level. And the gold ring one was a 2.8. It cost me like 200 pounds. I shot worldwide ad campaigns with that on 5D Mark II. Nobody battered an eyelid. Now I've got a rather sexy with a metal hood Cole Zeiss lens, which is a little bit better, but 20 times more expensive. And you know, just buy whatever you can afford. You don't have to have the latest and greatest, especially not for restaurant work. I'd actually keep the, the cost of these things down and invest in your lighting. So at this point, we've got the two cameras. We've got the 50 mil and the 100 mil, the laptop and the tether setup, the tripod, speed lights, batteries, and some decent soft boxes. It's a pretty good kit at this stage. Buying on from this point here is where you start to go into personal preference. So this is like your, your base level of kit. This is what you need to get any job done. There's not much you can't do with this. Once you move past this, you're probably going to be thinking, well, do I need a wide lens? For food, you probably want to go for a 35 millimeter prime. 24 might be pushing it a bit, but a 35 is a staple. It's what I film these on. Gives you that context, especially if chefs want like a portrait, an environmental portrait. The 35 millimeter lens is the lens for that environmental reportage look. Or it might be a case that you want a bit of a different look. So you want something like this. This is a tilt shift lens. And this lets you control the plane of focus it also lets you move the lens along the sensor, which lets you do some great stuff with perspective, but it also can turn your 35 millimeter camera into a medium format size sensor by stitching the images perfectly together. It's a very good way to do those things. They're very affordable as well if you buy them secondhand. This is the 45 2.8, and I've got the 90 2.8 hiding back there somewhere. However, as you may have realized from my point about the lighting being of great importance, you might decide to upgrade the lights. And if you're going to do that, you might be looking at something like the Pro Photo, the Elinchrom, or the Bron Color, where you get the pack and the head, a battery pack, not a studio pack like these ones, but a battery pack and a head, and the quality of light is great. We use the Elinchrom ELB 1200, 500, and 400 on the location that we rent from the Flash Center, and they're just beautiful lights, beautiful bit of kit, very portable, very versatile, and it has a bigger impact than upgrading, say, your 5D Mark II to a 5D SR. Now, one of the main difficulties in restaurant photography is transporting your kit. It's not like a commercial job where you have a crew. So you wanna be able to get it into a rucksack or a satchel or a bag of some sort. Now I have three different types of bag in the studio, kind of four, but we'll stick to three. I've got the roller bags, I've got the pelly cases, and then I've got this here, which is a backpack that I've just been given. This is what I'm going to be using for my restaurant shoot. This is the PYG Tech Onmo, Onmo. I'll pop a link in the description. And it's a budget camera bag. So I don't, I buy expensive bags. I've got some really expensive cases because they often go in planes or on the back of trains and stuff. But if I was going to a restaurant, I'd be using something more like this. So this is what I'm going to do. When I do the restaurant shoot, I'm not going to turn up with broncolor heads and all the rest of it. I'm going to do it in a way that is more realistic. So I'm going to take the kit that I've sort of described in this video, pack it into this bag, go by myself without an assistant, without a stylist, without a prop stylist and a director, and just do the shoot. So if you do want to see that, hit subscribe because that'll be coming up very soon. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. I hope they're of use. Join in with our Facebook group or on Instagram. Send me any questions and I try and make them into videos like this every now and again, just so I can sort of answer as many people as possible. I hope you're enjoying this. See you next time. Bye-bye.